What is going on, guys? I'm here to talk about the most obvious thing in the world. Of course, you know he's going to make this video. And no, it's not the Surface Duo June update because I've installed it. And I can't tell anything that's different and there's no change log, so I've got nothing to say in that regard. So instead, I'm talking about the other obvious thing, the big thing that happened today, and that is Windows 11 is here. It is out. It is something you can download and install if you are a Windows Insider. That is, if you want to become a Windows Insider, pretty simple. Just go to insider.windows.com, register, follow the instructions, switch over to the dev channel, which is something you will see in your actual Windows settings, and there you go. You'll be able to install and uh, run Windows 11. So let's talk about Windows 11. What does it look like? How does it work? Let's jump over here to my desktop. This is Windows 11. So the first thing you're going to notice is that your icons are in the center of your taskbar. The taskbar is actually taller. It's, it's actually a bigger taskbar than before. Whenever you click on your start button, you get this nice little animation, which I think looks, looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. And you get a list of pinned apps up here, which you can right click and unpin, uninstall. You can drag them around, whatever you want to do with them. Um, you know, obviously, no tiles, and I know some of you will be bummed out to have tiles be gone, but this is what we've got now. You've got your all apps here, and even though this is a dev build, you'll notice this is running very, very smoothly. You also get your, uh, you know, what they're calling a recommended files, and what this is, is it is the last files that you have dealt with on any of your Windows devices, because this is done in the cloud. So if it's your notebook through OneNote, even if you open this up in another device, you're going to see it on your Windows 11 desktop across the board. You also can open that up and see more of your recent files should you want to continue working on something like that. Of course, you've got the ability to hit start and then just start typing something and you'll get your, your search uh, just like you did before. So let's talk about this taskbar. One thing is you can't move it. You can't grab the taskbar and move it to the top, to the side. It is stuck down on the bottom. But let's go over here to the right hand side and click on the calendar. Let's clear out my snip and sketch there. That's the calendar and you saw kind of what the notifications looked like there. This is very Chrome OS. If you click on this setting group here, you're going to get this grouping of things. And again, this is very Chrome OS like as well. You can edit your quick setting and get rid of things. So like I'm on a desktop, so I don't need airplane mode. I don't need night light. I don't need mobile hotspot really don't need any of this stuff. Pretty much just need my networking thing. So that's what mine's gonna look like. And then you've got your overflow apps there as well. Now one thing I can't necessarily show you that easily is the fact that your taskbar is only on one screen. So I am dual monitor, but the taskbar is only present on one screen. This may be something that you can change in a setting later, but for now it is how it is. Let's look at the taskbar settings because it will actually serve two purposes. One, this is what the settings now look like. Radically, radically different. And we'll dive into this a bit more. There is a search button which you can turn off or on, and that's all that is. I leave it off because the start button does both. There is a task view, which will allow you to just zoom out and see your open apps, but alt tab will do the same sort of thing, so there's no need for me to do that either, so I have that turned off. There is a widgets screen, which you've seen talked about, and that is what this is. It will give you sort of the weather and scores and so forth. I'm not an, an NBA watcher, so let's get rid of that. I don't really wanna look at my recent photos here either, so we're gonna get rid of that. One reason I don't love this is that whenever I click on one of these links, unfortunately, it does open in Edge, which I am currently using Brave, and I can't seem to find a way to change that, so I actually am turning the widgets off as well. But yeah, you can you can drag these sorts of things around, you can add things to it, you can add widgets, whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool, and if you use if you use the Edge browser, it's going to be pretty decent for you, but I don't, so it's going away. Let's talk about these settings in general, though. This is laid out in a much, much more reasonable way. I love how you've got your, your system up here. Windows Update is up here as well, and it works really well. Looks really nice. There's a Bluetooth and Devices section. I'm just going to run through these, and if you want to pause to look deeper, go ahead and do so. Network and Internet. Personalization, I think, is one worth staying on for a little bit because you can go in and do things like changing from light to dark mode, and you'll see that this takes a second as it all kind of loads in a little bit roughly. It's still trying. I don't think that's fully done. No, surely it's not. That's like half and half. Okay, there we go. It's fully done. Um, let's go back to dark mode because I do prefer that better. 
see how long this takes as well. You have to think this is something that will be improved. There we go. Quite a bit in terms of theming. There's also lots of themes that are already pre-built. So that is all very cool. Apps, accounts, time and language, gaming. So this is uh, sort of an area where you can change things like game mode, Xbox game bar, if you want to have that on as well. Accessibility, privacy and security. And then lastly, Windows Update, which I already showed you. I just feel like generally the settings are laid out in so much a more logical way. It looks so much better than it did before. Control panel is still here if that is something that you need to access, but it looks like you really, you largely just won't have to anymore. Let's look at the file browser. You can see now, um, just the general look, it's much, much better. When I, I notice this as I'm resizing things, look how nicely and smoothly that is already flowing. That is really, really good. The icons are nice and big and colorful, rounded corners on everything. You can get a look here at the maximize and minimize sorts of uh, uh, animations. Or if you hover over that icon, you get the different options in terms of snapping. So let's snap this, let's do, Let's do that in the corner, and I'm not going to do Streamlabs because that's not what I'm recording with, but you get the general idea. Let, let's say, let's open up YouTube Music. Let's hover over, and let's do that. Boom, boom, boom. Easy as that. Really, really good stuff. And then you see down here, if I mouse over this, you now see the group, right? So I can actually see the whole group of apps, which I can now close them all at once, how cool is that? So if you're someone that uses a workflow with multiple apps, there you go, you can sort of just group them all together, close them all at once if you needed to. I've also got a very different look in terms of the context menu on your desktop, and I think that it, you know, look, you're getting the rounded edges and the general Windows 11 look on everything. I think that's a good thing. You also have a right-click context menu on different apps on your taskbar. Of course, many of these are not giving me much, but there's Brave. There is my file browser, and I really like the, that frosted glass look on this menu. So I'm sure I'm gonna miss like a million things, but this is a brief overview of kind of the big changes in Windows 11 as I am seeing them straight away. Rest assured that as more stuff pops up and we find more fun things, of course, I will be talking about them either in a video or on Twitter, which is a great place to follow me. And as soon as I have something to talk about in terms of Surface Duo, rest assured, I will be doing that as well. So guys, thanks for watching today's video. Thanks for making it to the end of the video because it does help me out a ton. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my upcoming content. And until then, stay nerdy, my friends.